so stretch pins. And these were the general sewing pins that you can still get that um, <laughs> she's video <laughs> that, you, that you can still get in the shops, but you know, not my favourite pins, but they're fine and everybody uses them. So where shall I go from there? Okay. Shirt pins. These are the pins that you which I wouldn't use, but these are the pins, you know when you get a shirt? Yeah. yeah. Like Ten thousand yeah. pins? Yeah. Because they're like a crowbar. Mm. Quite literally, they're yeah. like a crowbar. Yes. And if you use beautiful pins, you will just see. Ask mm. Monique. Just to change her life, I think she told me. <laughs> told us. Okay, sequin pins. You remember back years ago when, when everybody was making those Christmas decorations with masses of sequins, you know, sea bead yeah. and a sequin. Well, that's the little tiny pin that they used, a sequin pin. Yes. So, secret pins. Okay. Obviously, I don't use all of these on a daily basis. I've just collected them over the years. Well, thank goodness for that. So, <laughs> okay, so then, then we'll go. Put those two together. So, probably when I started quilting, I, I bought birch yes. quilting pins. Yes. You know, those white, yellow and white oh, ones. Yes. But again, they, they're actually like a crowbar. And they're, they're fine and I still use them. If I'm doing a project that's got lots of layers of fabric and I need a strong pin mm -hmm. and a long pin, then these are the pins I use. Mm -hmm. But they're not my daily use pin. I've got mine into bent and not bent. Pardon? Bent and not bent. <laughs> oh, bend and not bent. And then heads fall off. And these are numbered pins. So up to 20. So if you're if you've got your blocks in a row and you don't, you know, you're picking them up, putting them together, or you just want to number the first block in each row, then a numbered pin. And they come in different. This just happens to be the ones that I've got, but there are some with yellow stars on them, with numbers and so on. And so I mean that's that's what they're great for. Then flower head pins. Flower head pins are actually designed for machine paper piecing. So you're, you know, you've got your, your fabric on, on the piece of paper and you're pinning through. So they're reasonably sharp because they need to thread through paper and fabric. And they've got a flat head so you can press and the, the head of the pin isn't in the way. So, they yeah, some of them off. do. But I have, <laughs> to, I have to say, <laughs> pins obviously are made of metal and you get what you pay for. Mm. So if you buy cheap pins, you get a you get a horrible pin. Yeah, if you buy right. Clover or another good brand, then you get a quality pin. Thing. So you have to, I think, you have to spend the money because you will be really pleased. Okay, so then where shall we go next? These guys are fork pins. Ooh. And so I'll pass that round. So it's like those hair things that you know we used to put our rollers in with it yeah. and um, so it's two pins quite fine yeah, yeah. 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 Every, every day and um, so it's two quite sharp pins with a little handle on it and I use these well some of you probably know I used to work for Stitch of Time and I used to go to the shows and I used to see people demonstrating all these new things and I think oh yeah right oh, okay yeah, I think it works you know you've used that product a thousand times until got you've got it down fine, is it going to work to me? And I resisted buying these for quite a while. And then I, I thought, okay, well, I'll buy them. And these are really great if you're, when you're putting your blocks together and you're butting seams. Because in effect, it allows you to put two pins in, one either side of your seam. So they you, they do, I, my girls buy these and I say, so I can't use them. I said, no, you've got to persevere and try it. So take the handle, and if you just pin like that, they will actually go together. So this finger here splays them open slightly. So I'm pressing down onto that finger so that I can splay it open. So line everything up and pin, and pin a pin either side. Now I never sew over a pin, because as soon as you've hit a pin with your needle, you've damaged the point of your needle. So, and I do everything at 90 miles an hour, so I zoom to the pin, and then I use my flywheel to go over these two pins, because if it's, the needle's coming down, it's gonna hit the pin, I can back off, and just you just need to move your work just a whisker to get the pin to go down 
the needle, sorry, to go down past the pin. So I, so I don't zoom over the pin, so past the pin, zoom, and so on and so forth. So this will give you blocks that meet perfectly and stay because those two pins are holding it perfectly in place as you sew over. So fork pins. That's the other ones that changed my mind. They're the ones. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So why do you understand? Did you all know this? So, no, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't. So, so the other one, the other one that I used. So these are applicators. Oh, pins. they're yes. my best, so best. These, best. Are, these would be when you're doing hand applique because they don't have long ends that poke out. I use them when I do Celtic knot work to pin down my Celtic knot work. So anywhere that you want to... I use pin. them with my hand sewing yep. in my little yep. pieces because they're nice yes. and small yes. and I don't have to worry yes. about great, you know, exactly. manipulating great exactly. pins. And, and so yeah. they stay out of the way when you... Terrific. Um, so they're applique pins and these are the same but they but longer ones. Just pretty because they got red in <laughs> I think I think they're actually marginally finer than those. I actually bought these in America in a little and they came in a cute little bottle that was, you know, oh I'll have some of those. Don't know if I'm gonna use it, but they're cute. So I'm just gonna have some. And and so Anyway, so actually, they're cute pins, <laughs> <laughs> actually, I've said fine applique pins. So those yes. are applique pins. These are fine. So they are a little bit finer than those. Those are clover ones. Are they a bit longer? Those these? Cute I don't. Ones? No, I don't think they are. Because I've seen some slightly longer applique ones as well as the really short ones. No, same length. They're same length. Just a whisker finer. Okay. Just a whisker yeah. finer. And I'm all into fine pins. So then we get to my absolute favourites. This is the roll. These are the Rolls Royce of pins. So these are clover. Yes. They're short, as you can see. They're 0.4 thick, and that. But they have to be the opaque blue and yellow, not the solid blue and yellow, because these are not as fine as those. So if you're doing precise work and you want to line up, you know, um, something that, that absolutely needs to be perfectly aligned and pinned in place. These are the ones. As soon as you use these, you won't go back to anything else, I can guarantee. See, Emily agrees? <laughs> so those are, the, those are my absolute, and I can tell you, it's code number 2507, I'm pretty sure. Are they um, clover, clover as well? They're yeah, clover. They're, so they're clover. They are, they are just sharp. They're sharp, 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 sharp. If you really love a long, sharp pin, then these guys are, but these are 0.4, these are 0.5. So these are just a fraction thicker than these, but they're long if you really love a long pin. But again, they have to be the opaque because there is a solid green and, and uh, orange, and they're not as fine as these. So these two would be my favourite pins because they're sharp. So, yeah, well, thank <laughs> <laughs> you. So, so, that's my take on pins. Yeah. So, thank you. Thank you.